let's start with a very simple chapter that is polymers. First of all, from the name, let's break it. Poly means many, mers mean molecules. So, when many molecules join together to form a long chain, high molecular weight compound, the compound so formed is called polymer. The small molecules which join together are called monomers and the conversion of monomer to polymer is called polymerization. So let's look at the introduction and definition. Polymers are macromolecules meaning huge molecules having high molecular weight and composed of smaller repeating unit called monomers. The process of synthesizing polymers is called polymerization. The common examples include nail, hair, protein, DNA, carbohydrates, toys, PVC, pipes and so on. The list is endless. So polymers are very important from industrial point of view and also in our day to day life. So to understand the wide variety of polymers, first let's understand the classification. And the classification of polymer is based on several parameters. Let's understand them one by one. So the classification of polymers first based on source. The source could be natural or artificial. So based on the source, the polymers are classified as natural, semi-synthetic and synthetic polymers. From the word natural polymers, they are obtained from plants or animals. Example, cellulose obtained from cotton plant, jute, linen, rubber obtained from rubber plant. They are all plant polymers. Silk obtained from silkworm and wool obtained from sheep are animal polymers. Combinedly, they are classified as natural polymers. Semi-synthetic meaning partially man-made. So semi-synthetic polymers are obtained by modifying the properties of natural polymers like its appearance, tensile strength, luster, that is shine, etc. by some chemical treatment. So if you look at natural polymers like cellulose or cotton, they do not have high tensile strength and they also lack luster. So to improve the properties, it is chemically treated. And the product so formed would be the modified cellulose. This modified cellulose is semi-synthetic polymer. The example of this category include acetate rayon, viscose rayon, capramonium silk. Synthetic polymers meaning completely man-made, 100% artificial. So they are man-made, prepared from chemical substances by the process of polymerization. Examples include nylon, terylene, polythene and so on. Look at some of the images of natural polymers. on structure of polymers. Based on structure, the polymers are classified as linear, branched and network also called cross-linked polymers. Linear polymers, they are made up of long continuous chain without any branches. So it will have all the atoms linked in the straight chain and will not include any branches. The repeating units are joined together to form a long chain. Examples include polythene from ethene, PVC, polyvinyl chloride from vinyl chloride. Let's understand the reaction. So here ethene acts as the monomer and many molecules of ethene is polymerized. On polymerization, the double bond breaks to form a single bond and we get a unit CH2CH2 which is repeated n times to form polyethene. Branched polymers. 
These polymers consist of long and straight chain with smaller chain as branches. And because of branches, they have low density. So they are less denser as compared to the linear polymers. Example, polypropylene having methyl group as the branches. So we have propylene, the alkene as the monomer with the formula CH3, CH double bond CH2. Now, when this type of alkenes are polymerized, the group attached to the double bond becomes a substituent or a branch. And hence the repeating unit would be written as CH single bond CH2. Simple case mein double ko single kar do and jo bhi group yaha pe attached hai usko substituent ya branch bana do. So methyl becomes a branch and now the repeating unit would be repeated n times. So this is how the structure of polypropylene could be written. CH single bond CH2 methyl as the branch and repeated n times. Then we have network or cross-linked polymers. These polymers consist of linking chain polymers by strong covalent bonds leading to network-like structure. These are called cross-linked structure due to cross-linking. Examples melamine, bakelite, vulcanized rubber. So basically a network polymer or a cross-linked polymer could be visualized as two linear chains parallel to each other and in between they are joined together by some group or linkages. That is a simple idea of network or cross-linked polymers. So we will visualize the structure in the later part. classification based on growth polymerization. On the basis of growth polymerization, polymers are classified into addition and condensation polymers. So from the name itself, addition means the monomers would be added up and there will be no byproduct which will be eliminated. Condensation in simple words would mean the addition of monomers followed by elimination of a small molecule like water, glycol, SO2, HCl and so on. So let's look at the definition. Addition polymers. These are addition polymers containing alkenes as monomers and the polymerization process involves the addition at the reactive end of the growing chain across the double bond. So as we had seen in the previous example of polyethene or polypropylene, the polymerization was happening at the double bond which is now called as the reactive end. So the double bond breaks to form a single bond and the chain grows and since they are added with the same repeating unit, it's named as addition polymer. Many alkenes undergo chain growth polymerization when treated with suitable initiators in small quantity. The initiator could be UV light or peroxides which would drive the homolysis process to produce free radicals and hence the reaction would continue. The addition polymers contain all atoms of monomers. So that's what I said there will be no elimination of any small molecule in the addition polymerization. Example, polythene which we have already seen, PVC similar to polypropylene, PVC similar to polypropylene, just instead of methyl as the branch, you will have fluoro as the branch and Teflon, we will study the structure later. Condensation polymers. These polymers are formed by condensation of two monomers by elimination of a small molecule like water or methyl alcohol or any other small molecule. Condensation polymers are step growth polymers. Step growth polymers meaning here the polymer grows step by step with the elimination of the smaller molecule. So any pair of monomer molecules react to give a step in the condensation reaction 
like the dimerization or a tetramer example include nylon decron decron is another name of pteridine the structure of which we will see the last classification of polymers is based on molecular forces meaning the force of attraction which hold the polymeric chains together so molecular forces bind polymer chain either by hydrogen or by weak van der Waals forces. They are further classified as elastomers, fibers, thermoplastic and thermosetting polymers. Let's understand one by one. Elastomers. Polymers show elasticity and are called elastomers. So elastomers have a property of elasticity and to have the property of elasticity the polymeric chain should be held together by weaker forces of attraction and what is elasticity when polymer is stressed polymer chain stretches and when the strain is relieved the chain returns to its original position thus showing elasticity they are soft and stretchy and are used in making rubber bands the example include rubbers like neoprene vulcanized rubber then fibers fibers consist of strong intermolecular forces due to hydrogen bonding these polymers possess high tensile strength obviously because of very strong force of attraction and commonly used in textile industries example nylon terrene in nylon fibers the hydrogen bonding is between the nh group of one chain and the co group of another chain we'll study this in the nylon structure the next two important polymers are thermoplastic and thermosetting so from the name thermoplastic it has the property of plasticity meaning the property of the substance to become soft on heating and hard on cooling so these polymers are called thermoplastic as on heating they become soft and on cooling become hard they can be remolded and recycled so basically on heating they become soft because of that they can be remolded into different shapes and that is the reason the recycling of such polymers is possible they can either be linear or branched chain. Example, polythene, polystyrene, PVC, polyvinyl chloride, etc. And PVC is used as synthetic leather. Thermosetting polymers. These polymers are very strong due to cross-linking. So that is why they are cross-linked polymers. Under pressure, these polymers do not become soft. Hence, they cannot be remolded and recycled and hence cannot be reused. So, thermosetting, once heated, they are set. Meaning, they can't be softened on heating and that is the reason the reusability, recycling of these polymers is not possible. Example, Bakelite, urea formaldehyde, melamine formaldehyde, etc. So, when we move on to the structures of these polymers, the understanding of the meaning of thermoplastic and thermosetting would be much clearer. A very important point to note. The strength of polymers in decreasing order of intermolecular forces is the strongest intermolecular force in polymers is found in fibers and the weakest in elastomers. Out of thermosetting and thermoplastic, thermosetting is harder and that is why stronger than thermoplastic polymers. Hence, the strength of polymers in decreasing order of intermolecular forces is fibers, thermosetting, thermoplastic and elastomers.